What's up guys? Um, for today's video, I just kind of want to you know, break down why I chose these plays and then break down the intraday, what I was thinking, when taking plays, looking at key levels, and looking at some things that could have given us um, some good returns. So looking at yesterday's flow here on XOM, I was pretty bullish on it just from the fact, you know, where it's testing um, and things really stuck out were those, those 77 calls, 75, 76 getting hit, you know, pretty bearish in the overall terms as we do have a lot of puts being taken up near these levels, 74 put getting hit hard. Um, but I like that play, you know, we had both sides as well. This, another flow that really stuck out to me was this Baba flow here. Um, we saw the 120 call getting hit nice as well as the 110 put. So it gives us, you know, a possible move either way. Big downside, we have the 125 and the 100s getting hit as well. These are 218s, but um, as we saw, you know, this was kind of a chop market early in the morning, especially then we broke into a trend. Um, intraday, so it was nice as well. And lastly, my favorite play, um, one that ended up, I actually ended up going long on earlier, um, being SQ. So as we saw yesterday, you know, very bullish or very bearish flow with that big VPA gap below, but people were still smacking these 110 calls. Those would have ended in the money today as SQ did finish at 110.41, I believe. Um, but there was some nice downside off the start. Could have played some downside later in the day off a double top. But this is one I'm going to be watching probably throughout the week, especially if we can get that downside, a nice bearish day. I like this play a lot um, because there's that massive volume gap below. Now I'm going to go into, you know, what was I thinking when going through these plays, uh, day of the trade, right? And kind of break down my thoughts um, as well as how this reacted to the levels we talked about last night on the live. So getting started, you know, we'll start with SQ. Right off the open, uh, we tested this 103.4 put trigger, right? Then we get this close below here, retest, and we get a dollar drop. I actually didn't get into this. There's some nice, uh, the spreads were, were pretty ridiculous, but the nice plays out of this are really the long side, right? And first being we reclaim this 103 level, and then we bounce off very nice. Um, don't really get a great retest, but we do hold this level 103.4, get a nice push up to 111, uh, level we talked about earlier. 107.9 was the level I was really, really watching as it was a pretty... Um, big level if we look back, you know a level tested a lot And so I like that a lot. We also get this nice bull flag here very explosive break and then we hit that double top right so good entries on this You know on the put side we could have entered this for a nice little gain here early um, Didn't ride as much as I, I would have liked for that downside But once we get this reclaim of the 103.4 nice bullish candle off we could have entered anywhere in you know anywhere in these regions here, um, and we're above VWAP here. Reclaim the VWAP here, close above that 103.4, pretty low uh, risk entry spot, and we do get that ride all the way up here. You know, broke through 107.9, had a little bit of difficulty, but we have this massive candle here. Spy is riding throughout the day, nice spot. Then we test that 102, 111 level, and we get some nice pullback. This is another really, really good entry spot here. Um, we have a bull flag, double bottom, and then there, that explosive move next. This one would have been much faster of a move, um, but we did get a nice move there. And then spy, you know, it starts to tank throughout the day. Um, and we get this nice, you know, we could play it off this double top here. We could have played some puts. A uh, very good entry here. But, you know, going off levels, I wouldn't have entered here. Um, I would have taken money early and then kind of been done with SQ. Spreads are kind of wild, so I wouldn't like my fill there, as well as it being zero DTE, you know, time's not on our side, so these need to move quick in order for us to really get some good profits here. Um, end of the day, we do end up well. I want to see how it tests that 111 level again. Um, if we get rejected there again, I would play puts on this SQ play. Um, I like it a lot. Neo. Ended up gapping down heavy off the start. You know, we didn't get a perfect retest here. Um, so I didn't I didn't play Neo in the morning. Um, reason being, you know, down here, I don't really have levels to base it off of. You have to go a ways back. Um, but we do get this reclaim here at 20.8 of the put trigger. Bounces up for a nice possible gain. You know, starts consolidating, bouncing back again. Same thing throughout the day, kind of dies. I never um, really entered into Neo, but um, there was possibility for more scout type action. Didn't really set up a great trend throughout the day, um, but we did see here reclaim a VWAP, tests it, bounces back up, and the levels I would have washed off that are 20.25 and then that 20.6 level. 
20.8 being the big level at the top we could have played um, when SPY started to push up throughout the day. You know, there's there's definitely room to make some uh, money on NEO, but I stayed away from it. BABA was another one. Um, this one, you know, chopped more throughout the day, but we did get that perfect retest here off open. 113.4 was the call trigger. Could have taken this nice candle down. Um, and then we start this consolidation here at 110.3. SPY was also consolidating. So I was going to wait on, you know, on a move, um, right, up or down. Because in here, I probably would have got stopped out just because of zero DTE. Not very much on our side. We do get this massive break here, which is nice to see. And we could have traded up to the top of our range here, 113.4. Um, get some tests in here, a lot of tests in here. And then we fall above VWAP the entire time. So we re remain pretty bullish. Get a nice VWAP top test here and then push throughout the day with SPY. Um, that would have been a little bit more risky. I would advise playing next week expirations, especially um, this late in the day. In terms of an entry here on BABA, the best entry you know would have been down in here in one of these candles, this candle preferably. Um, but for me, I was really watching, you know, I don't know which way SPY is going to go. We've had a lot of bearish uh, transactions, so this could very easily fall through. I didn't play BABA today um, just because, you know, I wasn't really watching um, here, but there were some nice games to be played on BABA as well. More trading in the zone before finally breaking through later in the day. Um, once we get above VWAP, you know, there's not too much of a concern. We'll close above VWAP here. Retested a little bit here and then pushed through. Very nice move up here to 113.4. Saw those 115s, 120 calls getting hit yesterday, but also could have played this morning flush perfectly off that 113.4 level um, for a nice gain down to 110.3. I think the low of the day was about 110. So that was really, really cool to see. BA. BA had some nice flow yesterday, but the first thing I noticed with BA is it was really weak even when SPY um, was doing well. SPY started ripping in around here but we get this double bottom here. Um, I, I wouldn't enter here just because, you know, we don't really know those levels. It could reject. And if SPY, you know, knives on us, this is going to go down uh, right away for calls, for puts. Um, this We get that close right here but below 187. And then we get a nice little retest, another close below. And then we just start kind of chopping around in here, right? So there wasn't too many games to be played here on BA at the start. But finally, we get this uh, reclaim of that 187 level here. Retest isn't exactly 187, but there is a retest. Um, SPY is pretty strong, get a nice push up. But we never make it to the full top of the zone um, in terms of call and put triggers, right? So in terms of an entry here, the only way I really see any sort of money um, being made in terms of significant would be, you know, if we got in right off the bat with some puts um, and take, took this down into this chop, or if we entered here on a reclaim, okay can't hammer candle retest and then we push up um here's where i kind of start you know thinking what what should i do right and that's because we start getting this inside candle we do break up but then we get that little you know uh buyer stepping in pretty heavy not crazy volumes this isn't going to push out of fully scaled taking all my profits there um then we get that following candle a very big bearish engulfing and a nice down move um down back towards that 185.3 level for reclaiming, pushing with SPY towards the end of the day. Um, in terms of entering, you know, whenever I'm entering, I'm looking for our level, levels to hold. And in terms of puts, I want to see a level hold and a longer lower wick um, is a really, really good spot for an entry. In terms of puts, I want to see a level rejected or fall through a level and then retest longer upper wicks show seller stepping in so i like you know it gives me some more confidence um, especially at those key levels that we talk about um so that's what i'm really looking for when entering using vwap throughout the day a lot of traders use vwap so i use vwap um i'm not a big indicators guy but you know a lot of people use it so i might as well um we could have entered here as well you see this nice little doji hammer candle here off that 187 level little push does push a dollar but you know nothing too crazy in there a lot of chops throughout the day um one thing i did notice early was you know ba was definitely weak right early in the day um so that's something i would have taken note of looked at um but today was kind of a hard tra trading day just because we had a lot of chops early in the day 
finally got a little bit of a trend um, as we see intraday. Here I'll pull up SPY real quick. A little bit of a trend here intraday, and then we get this pullback here, and then an absolutely beautiful um, finish here on SPY, finishing at 441.92. Levels I was really watching were that 434 level, um, and then these levels, you know, they're they're decently big, but I was really watching that 440 level, um, and that's something that we did overcome with SPY, so I like that a lot in terms of a bullish outlook on SPY for next week. PLTR. Um, PLTR was a little bit difficult as well. Um, we had this nice hold, two candles here, could have been faked out. And then we finally, you know, we finally get this close below. So we can enter puts here. And they hit that first target at 11.9 uh, with a bullish candle, which ends up shooting us up into an uptrend all day. I was able to hop in Palantir here on calls. Um, I actually entered on this candle here. We get that retest of 12.08 put trigger. We close above VWAP, so I'm pretty confident in this play, right? Um, cheap premiums, so I didn't have to go crazy out of the money. And then we also get this nice trend throughout the day. Pushes up to 12.85. I scaled in here on this, um, you know, I was about 20% in here, and then was fully out on this big bearish candle here, just because it's, it's a pretty key level if we look over on Palantir here. But it's also a very bearish candle. Um, we end up going throughout the day, but I was happy with the profits. Can't really complain um, with PLTR today. We did end up testing that 12.7 level that we talked about, and then that 12.85 even, so could have been some really good gains if you were able to hold those runners a little bit longer than I did. Um, but that's something really, really cool to see here with PLTR. A common thing we also noticed was um, once we closed under view up, you know, we had some, some bouncing around down under on all these tickers, but we were eventually able to reclaim VWAP, bounce off VWAP, and it sent us throughout the day. So that was a common theme here later in the day with SPY was, you know, we reclaimed that VWAP and then we bounced off testing that 441 level, 442 level on uh, SPY. XOM. I was originally very, very, very bullish on XOM, but um, CVX Chevron, uh, another oil um, company reported you know they missed their earnings so this is one that kind of tanked it middle of the day but right off the bat let's see this was the opening candle here on XOM we get this second candle retest exactly at 74.4 put trigger and a nice little trend up and hit exactly at our 75.5 level so a nice entry here would have been this 74.4 retest we hold it nice and then we retest up here, you know, scaling along the way. It's pretty, pretty nice move here right off that um, candle reclaim of 74.4. Nice candle, you know, those 20% gains would have definitely been there right then. Um, can scale in here, but there's not too much to fear. And then we test that 75.5 level, um, heavy seller stepping in, a lot of volume on this candle as well. So I would have been fully out there on XOM. Um, I did not play XOM today. I was too focused on PLTR and SQ at the moment. Um, so I missed some nice gains here on XOM. In terms of a put, we could have taken them off of that call trigger. Um, we fade throughout the day. And then, you know, we finally closed below 74.4. But there's a lot of bouncing around in here. And then finally, we get down into this 74.3 and then eventually testing 74 before pushing back up strong with SPY throughout the rest of the day. Um, in terms of what I'm looking for in, in intraday when it comes to VWAP, you know, key levels, I talked about earlier for calls, I like those long lower wicks off of a key level, um, but we can also get faked out, right? Um, that's why I think it's really important to keep SPY open or whatever sector the ticker is in. In terms of XOM, that news broke that Chevron missed um, their earnings. So this is about when it started tanking. You know, we have some relative strength, bounce, 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 bouncing around. Um, but I really look for VWAP as well. If we can reclaim VWAP, this is a sign, you know, maybe I should let my runners run a little bit more. But on Fridays, right, I'm always looking to take profit. I'm perfectly fine with that 10, 20%. And then letting my runners run a little bit. I don't size as heavy on Fridays either as we do have uh, the theta decay times not on our side. So that's something to keep in mind as well when trading Fridays. You know, position our sizing a little bit smaller than we would on a normal day. 
because you know there is that time. Unless you want to play next week expirations, um, then you can you can use that normal sizing. But I would recommend using uh, lower size if you are going to play zero DTE, as the risk is a lot higher. Um, IV has been absolutely insane with VIX up near 30 for the latter part of the last couple days. Today we finally got it breaking down back below 28, which is very, very good for the bull case. Um, but you know, throughout the day, IVs were pretty juiced. So today would have been a great day to practice, you know, taking those profits fast and not looking back after you took the profits. It's also another great day to practice risk management. I'll have a video about that this weekend. Um, but I got stopped out once or twice, I believe, today on plays. I was pr I was pretty confident, right? Like I took SQ off of this uh, this candle right here, you know, really elevated, and it ended up breaking through. I stopped out, but I was pretty confident in that because you know we hit that 107.9 level. Um, not too much volume was pushing us through, so I was like, all right, we got buyers stepping in, um, and this is looks a little bit overextended from. Uh, the VWAP as well as some levels. So I was like, all right, you know, low risk here. Ended up getting stopped out, which is okay. Um, but because I had good risk management and my 10% loss in, I only took that 10%, not fully position size as is a Friday, zero DTE. Um, so that was something, you know, we can practice a lot in terms of risk management and then also scaling along the way um, and leaving a couple runners, right? Always good to leave those runners, you know, throw some trend lines on here, right? Look, know some bearish and bullish patterns bull flag pretty cool um, one to play as well as these wedge breaks here as sq did um but also knowing you know there's a double top here we can play this off you know we might not have the levels identically drawn but we do see a double top have some buyer or some sellers step in and then a lot of sellers step in here so this can give us a good thought process as to this is probably going to downtrend for a little while at least as we do have high volume a lot of sellers stop stepping in and we couldn't break through that 111 level so that's something you know I try to think about when um, going intraday is really patterns key levels um, use some VWAP here and there but you know overall it's just the candles that I really trade off of and that has really helped me a lot as well as just you know realizing we need to have good risk management as well as scale along the way take profits right you aren't gonna go broke if you if you uh, take green, it doesn't matter if it's 5%, 2%, or 100%, right? Just take green, man, especially when these IVs are absolutely juiced. You know, I think earlier on SQ, I saw an IV of about 400%, and that is absolutely insane. Um, but, you know, that goes to say, you know, take those, those gains quick and don't look back after you took them. If you got stopped out, reassess, see if we bottomed out, see if we topped out, and then you can enter into those plays. You can't get that money back, right? But you can reassess and re-enter into a play. It's always, you know, we can always re-enter a play. And I think that's a big thing to keep in mind um, when trading is respect our stop loss, but also realize we can get back in um, even if we do lose that 10%, right? So that's something really cool to see as well with the trades today.